So we've run all the pre-processing, it's just taken a few minutes, and once it's done, you should see something like this, giving you a summary of everything after it's pre-processed all of your data. There shouldn't be any errors anywhere in any of this stuff above. So feel free to browse through that, and again, remember that everything has been dumped out into this output proc that FT file. So if we go in, again, I'm not going into ft.results yet, but I'm going back into this directory, which had our raw data, which went into the analysis. I'm looking at this first just to actually look at the data before it went in there. I guess it's after the fact now. And to show you some things with this AFNI graphical user interface, or GUI. So first thing, notice that we have these different images these different viewers. So there's the axial, which is this one, sagittal, which is this one. Those are the two that default when they open up. And we can also open up a coronal as well. If you want to get rid of these, you can just type X. If you want them back, just click on this image right here. Also notice that we can click on this overlay to place another data set on top of this anatomical data set. In this case, let's choose epi run one. So click set, take a few seconds. To... And what you see in this little box here, which has green and red and yellow, this is the actual functional data set. So this is what's acquired every couple of seconds and we record activation from each voxel in the brain. Notice that it's brightest in the CSF, which is not surprising because T2 weighted images show up brightest in liquid areas, such as CSF. All right. So I'm going to do here, I'm also going to set the underlay to this FT epi run one, and I'm going to close the overlay. So now we see our raw functional data set. This is run one. And another interesting thing you can do is click on this graph right here. This shows you a time course over the entire run of the activation at the voxel centered at your crosshairs. So here, let's, if you right click in any of these panes, you can click on jump to XYZ. And for these tutorial purposes, let's say 19.3 space 78 space negative 5.7 and hit enter. Okay, That's near the back of the brain. And what you'll see here, if you click in one of these windows right here and type shift A, it'll auto scale it to make it a little bit cleaner. Okay, Notice that these first two TRs, I'm clicking the left and right arrow keys, are relatively high compared to everything else. Okay, so this value right here, it should be around 1,000 for most of these TRs, just for this subject. It's a kind of an arbitrary value. But notice that the first two are relatively high. Recall that we wanted to chop off those first t two TRs because we hadn't reached a steady state yet. So that's why we did that command. Besides that, if you click a little further along here, and if I'm just clicking the right arrow key as I go along here, notice that there seems to be a pretty obvious dip right in here. So I keep going, keep going, and notice what's going on down here as I'm going across. Okay. It seems like there's a pretty significant head motion during that one acquisition. So we might need to be aware of that. This should be taken care of by the 3D volume registration step. Once you're happy with all that and your data looks okay and you know what to look out for, we're actually going to go into the results directory and look at our pre-processed data.